Hi, my name is Mike and I am one of the in-house education consultants here at The Profs. And in today's video, as part of a series of videos to get ready for those challenging Oxbridge interviews, I'm going to be talking about how to get into Cambridge's maths course, but specifically how to ace the interview component. Um, now, this is something that you definitely cannot leave to the last second to get ready for. Um, I think by the time that you're doing this video, you're probably just getting ready to submit your UCAS personal statement or you have only just done so. Uh, in which case, congratulations on making it this far in the process. Um, but we want to be starting on that interview prep immediately. And I think in terms of how best to do so and how best to conduct yourself in an interview, there's so much that I can say on this topic, particularly given that I've studied at Cambridge, um, you know, particularly in mathematics myself. Um, but if you have any further questions on this or you like what you're hearing and you want to receive more content like this, do like and subscribe and make sure to leave a comment in the comment section as well if you have any particular questions. For now, let's get on with my top five tips on how to ace this interview, starting with tip number one, and that is understand a typical interview structure and how that can vary across colleges. Now, I think it is standard to believe, really, that at the majority of different colleges out there, you will be getting two interviews. One is going to be based more on pure mathematics, and one is going to be probably be based on applied mathematics. And when I say applied mathematics, it's probably going to be uh, mathematics of your choice, but they do try to cover a little bit of statistics and a little bit of mechanics there. Um, it's very, very important that they do that so that they can see your full potential in all aspects of the subject. And it's very difficult to do if they're only just testing you on pure maths, which funnily enough does make up the majority of mathematics that you've studied at this point. But when it gets into university level, it expands very, very quickly into very particular niches. Um, and when that does happen, the amount of content that you might be learning in mechanics overall, if you were to specialize more in that, starts to um, become equal to what is expected maybe in a degree where you're just doing pure mathematics. So very, very important to bear in mind, universities, well, different colleges at Cambridge do want to see your full potential there. And I would expect pretty much every college to be giving that, um, like giving you maybe like two interviews, again, one on pure and one on applied mathematics as like the, the maximum number of interviews that you do get. I think the only other exception that you might have to that is let's say that as part of your A-levels in maths and further maths, you only studied, or, a lot, or an equivalent to that, maybe you've only studied pure mathematics. You've already written that in your personal statement and you've been asked to come along to an interview, um, in which case, again, congratulations. But in that regard, you might perhaps be given an, two interviews on pure mathematics or if you've only done, say, maybe applied mathematics, uh, two interviews and apply. But these, these situations I'm talking about are incredibly rare. And I think just to make sure you're as fully prepared as possible, ha um, being ready to give an interview in pure and an interview in applied mathematics is probably the best way to go. Moving on to actually the content and the interviews themselves, what are our interviewers looking for? Um, this is something that we need to be thinking about as our tip number two. We need to already work out exactly what our interviews are looking for. As an extra tip, I'd be even say, saying specifically, when you do know who's interviewing you, you can research them. Um, and I'm not saying this in a creepy way at all, but one thing that I think is incredibly beneficial that I've heard a couple of people do that has made for very effective interviews is that they've gone and researched whoever's interviewing them before they've even gone. Um, and they've already thought to themselves maybe one or two questions that they could ask the interviewer um, maybe in a shared area of common interest there. But in terms of what they're looking for, they're looking for, again, your problem-solving ability. It's mathematics is very difficult to escape that skill if you're studying that subject. The ability to compartmentalize uh, different solutions there. Um, the ability to be able to speak your mind is really, really important. Even if you don't know where to go in a question, they could be still very impressed by the creativity that you've demonstrated in exploring a possible solution. Um, and then they might be able to suggest maybe um, a better alternative for you um, where you don't necessarily have to do too much work to change your, the solution that you're constructing. 
So it's really important that they understand those thoughts so that they really know how you work and operate as a mathematician and they can help you as much as possible. I should say this, they don't want to see you fail at questions and they, they shouldn't be making you feel like you don't know everything and you don't deserve to be there. What they do want to do is they want to make the experience as beneficial for both you and for them as much as possible. So if they can offer some guidance to you in terms of where to go, that is down for them to do, but that's obviously, you know, based off your efforts first in being able to reach a solution on your own terms, which is also something that they don't want to spoil for you if you're able to do that. In terms of practicing the maths questions uh, themselves, um, really, it's important that you look over step one, step two and step three papers. You may be thinking, well, I only need to take step two and step three, you know, at the end of year 13. But what I tend to do with a lot of my students is I get maybe past quite light paper questions from step two and step three in particular, um, look at ones that are particularly challenging. And I would actually not give them a written form of the question, but I would read out the question and I would try to give them hints as to where to go um, and what to do um, in order to be able to get to a specific answer if they were really, really struggling. But I would only do that after they've attempted a few different solutions. And I wouldn't even just say straight away, this is the answer. I would say, well, um, I mean, something that you have maybe missed out on is perhaps like the meaning behind this line that you've written. Is there another direction that you could take um, other than what you've already done? to be able to move forward. You need to be asking or getting someone else to ask you this like very similar questions there eventually. But it's already good if you can continue your problem solving skills and abilities by looking over more past paper questions with those. If you feel like those are too difficult, maybe the MAT papers are a better place to uh, go to to start off with. Those, so those are the admissions tests that you have to take for Oxford for mathematics. And Actually, if you're interested in the process of preparing for the Maths Oxford interview rather than the Cambridge one, have a look at this video here and we can help with that. Um, but that offers another resource, which is fantastic for, again, developing your problem solving abilities um, and really just getting into like some really, really interesting problems that you could potentially be asked in a similar vein in the middle of your interviews. Um, on top of that, they will ask about your personal statement. So I, I think if I was a tutor looking at potential people going onto this course, I would be maybe asking for follow-ups about things that they've done. So if you've mentioned that you had read a book on a really, really interesting book on spherical geometry and you were like found this particular chapter really, really interesting because it opened up your ideas and perspectives of how proofs can operate. Um, in particular areas of mathematics, I might be asking, well, um, have you read any other chapters from this book? I know that you said that you've read maybe this particular chapter here, or have you like watched any like um, lecture videos um, in order to sort of um, get into the theory even more than what the book sort of discusses or talks about? What have you done independently since your personal statement to your interview in order to, to continue your interest in the subject. So I always say to my clients, we don't act like the application has ended when the personal statement is sent away. You're still, in theory, working on the personal statement, but you are working to defend it more, than, more so than write it, or at least give it some context. Um, and it tends to be an, a nice little icebreaker that is asked at the beginning of a session as well. So. Um, it isn't always asked in interviews, but I would always be in a position to answer them, those questions should, should I actually ask them. Speaking of books, um, I get into tip number four now. Um, we want to be reading over problem books as another source of questions that can help with this. There are a couple of book recommendations I can give for that that are good places to start. So Advanced Problems in Mathematics. Uh, by Stephen uh, Siklos is a really, really good book, um, as well as uh, Challenging Mathematical Problems by uh, Tony Gardner is also really, really good. Past UKMT Senior Math Challenges, as well as BMO uh, 1 questions, are also really, really good to go to from time to time. If you find those a bit too easy, try BMO 2. 
uh, which is the round afterwards. Um, but again, just as extra sources of problem solving, that is pro probably going to be acting as your best source of preparation for these interviews. Um, I mean, on top of that, though, make sure that you are recording yourself talking out your solutions rather than just writing your answers down on paper, because I want to know how well you can communicate your answers. And you should be aware of how well you're communicating your answers too. Are you speaking slowly and clearly uh, to the camera? Or ideally, the, the tutor like on the other end of the desk? Are you um, explaining in situations where you don't know what the answer is that, um, well, I'm not 100% sure where to go, but I, th I think what I would like to do first is maybe try, like, expand this as a Taylor series first. And I think the benefit of doing that might be that I can get rid of the negligible terms to be able to construct an approximation of a particular value. Um, but I will try that for a little bit. I'm not 100% sure whether that will be the best route, but this is what I can think of right now. Um, even saying that is better than just saying, I don't know, and then nothing. Or getting an answer right, but not saying anything in terms of your ideas. Um, they want over communication in the middle of the supervisions. Make sure you grant that. Don't hold yourself back by not saying anything at all. Or actually just saying point blank, I don't know, and not trying anything either. It's okay to be wrong <laughs> in a few situations. It's really, really important that you go through this process of trial and error if you're not too sure where to go. And also, your ability to respond to hints from supervisors um, is really important. Um, listen to what the tutor is saying to you or suggesting to you. Think, why are they saying what they're saying? Um, like, what could they be suggesting that is going to make my life easier in solving this problem? Speaking of tutors, we get onto the very, very final point of this video, and I'm going to be suggesting, I think, in pretty much every single interview video, just because it is so, so helpful from personal experience in getting ready for entrance into Oxford and Cambridge. And that is work with an admissions tutor like myself. Um, now, not only do you have the benefit of having somebody to help organize your thoughts um, in terms of preparing for the interview, and you have somebody to um, like just keep up your sort of responsibilities and abilities and get it ready for it, but you will also have the opportunity as well to run through practice interviews, um, potentially with other tutors. So in fact, in this company alone, um, we tend to have one person like myself who works with a client or a student like yourself um, for you know the majority of the time working on the interviews, looking at specifically how to recognize hints that somebody is giving in the middle of an interview, how to respond to different types of questions, what are the definite do's and don'ts, um, how to, you know, sort of also try to cut down the amount of time that we're taking to solve a question um, so that we're able to uh, fit in, uh, you know, our attempts at perhaps more challenging questions in a similar amount of time. Um, but we also tend to have, um, say, a separate tutor that runs a practice interview in a situation where you're not too comfortable so that we can actually um, reconstruct as most sort of effectively as possible what your actual Oxbridge interview is, is going to look like for you. And that is going to be a really important thing that you're not going to be able to get as easily yourself. So I highly recommend working with a tutor and what a better place to be able to find a tutor uh, than the profs. So I'm sad to say we've come to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please make sure to like and subscribe in order to hear the latest information about university applications as well as tutoring services. If you have any questions yourself or any opinions about how some of these things are working, make sure to leave a comment in the comment section or even share it with a friend or family member if you think they might be interested. But if you want to hear directly from us, have a look at the contact information on screen right now. And as always, best of luck with your application.